this is a little uh, blanking prism that fits in a runway light. Sometimes they don't want the light to shine in certain directions, so they pull out the glass prism that's there and they put a solid metal one in instead. Um, it has to be the same shape and size as the original glass one as it seals against rubber gaskets to keep the weather out. Now this is a uh, interesting sort of a thing because if I sit it flat like that, I haven't got any draft on these faces here. Uh, I could sit it that way, but then there's no draft here or here. So what I have to do is actually sit it that way up, um, which means I'm going to have to initially cut the mould down to find the parting line. Uh, but what I'll do, so I don't have to do that every time, is I'll make a quick and a dirty sand odd side to, um, uh, so to, to give me the, the first half of the mould each time. Because the only uh, spare box I have to make the odd side in is one that has holes, the first mould half I have to make actually has to have uh, pins on it. <laughs> this means so. Uh, this is going to look a bit of a funny way to do things uh, as a result. We'll just lift that up like that. Okay, now, all right, that's there. And that's not too bad. A little bit of part on it first, perhaps, just a smidgen. Sweep the worst of it off. Just leave that little film of part on that I like. Now some nice fine facing sand. That should be more than enough. See for the first lot of the backup sand. That'll be more than enough of that too. Where's my random tool? Here we go. Turn the whole lot over as one unit. Now what I've got to do is cut down to the parting line. Which is somewhere hidden under here. And a little bit this side too as I recall. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to get the parting line exactly right, so a little trick you can, you can use to help, just give it a little loosen first. And then we'll just lift it a little bit, and if I haven't got the parting line right, some of the sand will actually break away. Yeah, there's some broken away there. There it is. Now we've got the parting line a bit closer. I'll just neaten that up a little. Swing it around there. We've got a little bit of a sweep with a brush to smooth it up a little bit. Now we should have the parting line about right, I hope. So now we'll make the odd side that we'll use each time. <coughs> I will actually use some fine sand in this, not that I need the finish of course on an odd side, but the fine sand is stronger. The facing sand is, is stronger than the, uh, the backing sand, because the backing sand has been used more and it's had the bond burned out of it whereas the facing sand is actually half new sand so it's a lot stronger now 
Now odd sides need to be need to be rammed quite hard because it's going to have several moulds made against it, so we need to get some strength into it. Right, now we'll just remove the odd side and set it aside. Right, sit that over there. And now we'll make the proper mould half. One feeder. A little bit more part perhaps. Shouldn't need too much down there, I don't think. It's already got a layer. Sweep the worst of it off the pattern again. Put a sprue about there. A little bit of facing sand. Now I'll cut a pouring basin. Now I'll connect the pouring basin with the sprue. The idea is here is that the pouring basin gives you something decent to aim at for a start. But you leave a little ridge between it and the actual sprue. And that ridge helps control the flow. The ridge does need to be quite well radiused if you can manage it. Best way to radius it is probably just with a brush. It's mainly the junction of the uh, the ridge with the sprue that needs to be radiused well. The other side can do with a bit of the ridge can do with a bit of a radius, but it's not quite so critically important. Okay, it's the basin cut. Now we can. Remove this half of the mould. Cut the, uh, the gate. I'm cutting the gate in the uh, top half of the mould, in the cope half. The runner will actually be cut in the uh, drag half. Get 
now to cut the uh, the runner. Look, get this a little loosen. Put the odd side on it. Turn the whole lot over. Quick tap. And hopefully the pattern will now stay down on the odd side. Yo, oh, well it fell out anyway, but it didn't fall out where it was supposed to. <laughs> just need to just break the edge here that the metal's going to flow over there. That's it. And this one we will put back on the odd side. Here we go. Quick trial close of the mould to see that uh, everything's okay. Whoops. There we go. Lift her up. Blow it clean. And that's the first one done. Right, over in front of the furnace. Now. This time, thanks to the odd side, I will not have to cut the parting line again. These sand odd sides, they don't, they don't last all that long. They, they tend to compress each time you ram a mould against them. They tend to sort of get rammed down a bit more. But you can... Oh, Five to ten castings, ten with luck you'll get out of them. Quick tap again to make certain the odd sides are loose. Carefully lift it off. And there we have our mould parting line and all. See ya. Bit more part. Off the pattern as usual. Sprout and away we go again. And cut the pouring basin again. There, I think that looks not too bad. Connect the dots, as it were. Ah, come on. 
Here he goes. Now, just radius the. Uh, that's it. 